are y'all? I'm full, super full. I ate lots of pasta and most of my dessert. And as I'm eating the dessert, I'm thinking, man, I wish I had had some like angel food cake or something to sop up all the yumminess. But anywho, it is what it was, and it was good, and I still have a little bit for later. I am tempted to open up a bottle of wine, but I am a friggin' rebel, and I want to be able to stay up late tonight and binge watch uh, Cobra Kai again. Yes, Cobra Kai, the spinoff show 30 years after Karate Kid. I watched it originally on YouTube. And then they moved it over to Netflix, and I binged watch season one and two, because there's only two seasons on Thursday, and I'm about to do it again. I love that show. It just gives me such nostalgic joy and pleasure. But anywho, thought I'd come on and finally do the cheese man, the what's been going on, the tea talk, if you guys are still even interested. I know some of y'all are. Uh, I've, like, bonded with you guys cyberly. Cyberly. That's a word, right? I bet it is. Um, either here on YouTube or we've rolled over onto Facebook. So I do truly, honestly consider a lot of you guys my friends. And I truly, honestly know that um, and believe that you guys are concerned when I'm going through some things or my family is going through some things. But now that little dude is at his dad's and I have some downtime, I am going to just sit and go down my list of what the heck has been going on. Um, nothing really bad nothing really bad it's just because I have anxiety disorder everything kind of builds up on top of each other so a few weeks ago um on my video called girl talk or something like that I mentioned to you that my ex's wife had reached out to me regarding putting little dude on her Aflac insurance and I remember I was feeling a little hmm about it all but I also told you that we had had a really long conversation and I learned a lot about her that I didn't know that kind of made me empathize with her okay so uh, about a month ago almost a month ago she called me about the insurance and she's one of these ladies and I've said it before where if you give her a lending ear or initiate some kind of conversation, she just goes on and on. And, and, and I kind of feel bad in a way that she told me a lot of really personal things, things that I wasn't really comfortable knowing, but things that did help me uh, understand things are not always what they seem. Okay, so uh, she and I have had a rocky history They've been together on and off for 10 years, and throughout those 10 years, she and I have gotten along, then butted heads, and gotten along, then butted heads, and I found out what I had always suspected was true. I'd always suspected that my, that little dude's dad was making her believe things that weren't true about me, about he and I. I'd always suspected because I couldn't understand why this girl was so suspicious, why this girl was so anxious about me, why this girl was so um, leery of me, very insecure, ready to pick a fight, accusing me of wanting him back, accusing me of playing tricks and I couldn't understand I'm like oh my gosh and I would try and explain to her over and over again there were so many years where I didn't physically get sick when I saw him that I couldn't believe she would think that I wanted anything to do with him but it didn't matter what I told her she wasn't listening and she was listening to him that's why she came clean and admitted everything I suspected she was jealous of me she was intimidated by me she was threatened by me she was afraid of me because the ex when they would get into fights and get angry he would compare her to me he would compare their relationship to ours um would tell her things like I'm not going to marry you because if I was going to marry anybody, it would have been me because I was the marrying type. I would have made a good wife. All these things that he was telling her for years when he would get mad at her, when they would have a fight. Um, so she hated me. I would have hated me too. And then on my side, he was telling me that she was unreliable, that she was flighty in the mind, that she was irrational, that... She, he would tell me about things that she did that did make me think she's not dealing with a full deck here. She's There's something off with her. I suspected maybe she had some mental issues, maybe a little bipolar. Something was not right. 
but I was basing it on what he was telling me. Well, come to find out during that almost two hour conversation with her, I mean, she was just telling me all her business. The man has not changed. The man that I left is the man that she married. Guys, he is still irresponsible. He is still standoffish. He is still non-demonstrative. He doesn't show affection. Uh, he still puts money above everything. And I don't mean money for his family, his household, his children, money for him, money for that comfort, money for that nest. He's very tight. He earns money. He's a good earner, but he doesn't want to distribute. He doesn't want to spend. He doesn't want to put it where it belongs. So as she's sitting here telling me everything she's gone through in the last 10 years, it's everything I went through in six years, but I walked away. She married him. He is still the same person. And that's not a very good person. He has a huge heart when it comes to his kids with their emotional being. He can't see his kids crying. He can't see his kids sick because he falls apart. But does he care about his kids' education, his kids' health, his kids having money for this and that and this and that, his kids having everything that they absolutely need? No. No. And... He's just the same friggin' person that I left. And at the end of that conversation, I felt bad for her. I felt really bad because I'm like, wow, how could you do that? I, I left it. I walked away. There was no way I was going to continue to have that kind of relationship around my children. I did not want to be a sad, mad, depressed mom. I couldn't do that to my kids, but she married the guy. I mean, two kids later, I guess, but who, anywho. But after that conversation, it's not like she and I were calling each other or anything, but after that conversation, we both were really cool. We were like, okay, well, now you know some things and I know some things. And she apologized for ever having just really hated me. And she explained everything. And, and we decided that for the, for the kids' sake, her little boy and my little boy together, our brothers, we, we decided that maybe we, she and I should communicate a little better. Because if we let the ex or her husband be the middleman, there's going to be a lot of stuff screwed up so we left it off okay well fast forward two weeks his next visitation uh, he calls me and tells me he forgot to give little dude his medication because little dude during summer break has been asking to stay over until monday so i send his medications with him so he can give him his medications on monday and that monday he called and told me i forgot to give little dude his medications what do i do i said well be sure to give them to him right now Make sure you feed him so he doesn't take him on an empty stomach and bring him home soon. Okay. That day, I had the beginnings of what became um, a migraine, which is, we'll talk about later. Um, and I told him, I have a really bad headache right now. So when y'all get here, please call me because I might be asleep. I've taken my migraine medication. Please call me so I can come downstairs and open the door. He said, okay, left it at that. A few hours later, they come home. They say their goodbyes. He leaves. I get one text message after another, after another, maybe half an hour later. And I'm falling asleep. I've settled a little dude down. I'm falling asleep. I'm getting a killer headache. And uh, when I don't respond to his texts, he begins to call. He usually likes to call and give little dude good night. You know, tell little dude good night. By the time little dude gets here, his phone is not charged. So he'll call me. I give little dude the phone and I'm just like, I'm not up to it. I don't know. I feel good. I'm not going to get up. I don't even, you know, uh, little dude's already in bed. I'm not going to do it. So I kept ignoring the call and it kept coming in, kept coming in, kept coming in. Finally, I answered. and he asked me if I can send him a copy of the receipt from Target. He had taken little dude to Target before. So, okay, whatever. I send a picture of the receipt from Target. The receipt had two purchases on it. A toy for each little boy. Well, the phone calls and text messages start after that. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like, what? I answer the phone. I'm like, what? Um, can you repeat to me the conversation we had? I'm almost embarrassed to tell you guys this because this is what I'm caught in. Mind you, this is two weeks after she and I had our heart to heart. So the ex is like, can you uh, remind me or tell me about the conversation we had when I called you about little dude's medication? I'm like, uh, you told me you forgot to give it to him. And I told you to give it to him as soon as you could and make sure he ate. Um, okay, did you mention anything about a headache? I said, yes. I said, I had a headache for you to call me when y'all got here so I could hear 
and go open the door. Okay, did you ask me to buy you any medication for your headache? I'm like, what? What? What, what is? What? What is going on? You're being very weird. What is happening here? I know, I know. I'm sorry, but did you ask me to buy you any medication? No. Did I offer to buy you any medication? I said, why would you offer to buy me any medication? I don't know, to make you feel better. I'm like, look, I don't know what is going on over there, but I don't want any part of it. It's late. I have to get up. I have to go to work tomorrow and my head hurts. I don't want any part of what's going on. He's like, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I just wanted to clear up some things. I said, okay, look, if anyone is listening, I had no reason to ask him to buy me medication. He did not offer to buy me medication. I have prescribed medication for my migraines, so there is no reason that any medication should be an issue tonight. Do you know what this fool had the nerve to say? Oh, okay, well, can you send me a picture of the medication that your doctor prescribed for you so I can show it to people who are tripping? I'm like, no, sir. I said, that is my private medical information. You don't need to know what medication I'm on. You don't need to know anything. You don't even need to know what I've already told you. I said, I'm hanging up. Don't call me again tonight. So I hung up and we left it at that. So the next morning, I find out that it had been their little boy's first day of virtual classes. And I felt like a jerk. Like, had I known that it was going to be the little boy's first day of virtual classes, I would not have allowed or been okay with little dude being there because that would have been a total distraction to the other little boy. And I felt as a mother like I had done something wrong and I wanted her to know that was not my intention. So I sent her an, a text message that morning and I apologized. I said, had I known, I wouldn't have allowed him to be there. I didn't want you to think I was that insensitive. I hope it wasn't too much of a distraction. She responded with, oh, no, don't worry about it. I don't work on Mondays. Everything was fine. Little dude was a little bit bored. But after classes, you know, they got to hang out and spend some time together. I said, okay. And then I couldn't help myself. Being maniosa, being messy, being a little poke the bear. I was like, can I ask you something? What was the deal with the migraine medication questions yesterday? Her response was, oh, the ex gets himself into these kinds of situations. Don't worry about it. I'm over it. I'm sorry we bothered you. What? So I didn't get the meat. I didn't get the meat off the bone that I wanted off of that. So I don't know what happened. She just tried to blow it off or whatever. So I don't know if it was him trying to instigate something again, like, oh, poor Mel, she didn't feel good. And I had to buy her pills. Or if she assumed that he come over like a knight in shining armor with Tylenol. I don't know. It was weird and it was embarrassing because I'm like, y'all are 40 something years old and y'all are still messing with me. Leave me out of y'all's mess. Now I know that the ex messes with her about me, but I thought she was over it. So did he bring me in or did she start spinning her little wheels and get these weird thoughts in her head again? I don't know. Okay. So fast forward two more weeks, which is today, which is Saturday. Um, the ex little dude's dad says, I have to work. Would it be okay if she and her, his little brother pick him up? I have gotten to the point where I know little dude is safe with her. I know they care about each other. I know that she loves him. And I know she takes on the brunt of the responsibilities for him. So I asked little dude because he's autistic. Changing his routine is not cool. He likes her, but we've ha been, we've had this conversation before and he always says no. He would prefer his dad pick him up. So uh, um, I asked him if it would be okay for her and his little brother to pick him up. He goes, I think I would be okay with that. So I'm like, oh, cool. You know, mind you, all morning long, the dad is sending me a text message. Can she pick him up? Can she pick him up? Let me know. Let me know. I'm still at work. I'm not sure when I'm going to be off work, but at least the boys can hang out together. So I'm like, you know what? Ugh, I don't trust anything you say. Let me just reach out to her. I felt comfortable enough to reach out to her. She said, we had discussed, my husband and I had discussed my possibly picking little dude up uh, last night, but he hasn't said anything to me this morning. Big friggin' surprise. He doesn't let anybody know crap. So this is why we need to communicate. So I told her, well, you know what? Little dude is okay with it. If you are still able to come get him, I'll get him ready and he can go. So she came and she picked him up. Um... And he left with a smile on his face, so that was awesome. But I want to get along with this girl. Before, early on when they first got together, we got along. I remember the first time we met her, we got along. We have a lot in common. We got along. And then 
they were going through all their troubles and all their problems and breaking up and getting back together and breaking up and getting back together. He told me so many horrible things about her that she clarified. Um, and just in talking to her those two hours months ago, I found out when I thought about it and put two and two together. Yeah, he lied about a whole bunch of stuff. That stuff that she tells me makes more sense than things that he told me. And just my history with him myself, I'm like, wow, he's still the same person. But anywho, so little dude is over there. That was one initially. That was one of my, oh my gosh, these people need to friggin' leave me alone. I'm too old for this crap. I don't want any part of it. I need to be able to get along with this woman. You would think that the ex would want me and his wife to get along for the kid's sake, but that's not how his head rolls. He thinks the whole wide world revolves around him, and he thinks that everything is about him, and it's just absolutely narcissistic he is an absolute narcissist and it's just amazing to me. you're never going to make somebody like that understand that your ex and your wife need to get together for the kids they need to get along and i hope that she and i can continue to communicate for a little dude because i honestly believe and she believes that had it not been for him in both of our ears we could have gotten along for years but anyhow so that was that um also the last time i talked to you guys i told you my mom fell uh, we had to call 911. Uh, she's fallen again a couple times since. Uh, she's never been the same since her hip surgery, since she broke her hip. Her short-term memory is absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. So that's causing a lot of issues in regards to her doctor appointments and in regards to her just remembering to take care of herself, which falls into little dude possibly not being taken care of as well because he's there with her during the week. And... Nothing has happened to him. He is old enough to do a lot for himself, but it still scares me that if something were to happen to her, he's only 11 and he's autistic. I'm worried that he's not going to know what to do. He he tends to like shut down. And um, I'm worried about that situation, but I was hopeful because he was going to start school in September 8th. So when they told us that they were going to have the choice of virtual learning and in-person learning, I didn't have the option to choose virtual learning because we didn't have the laptop. We didn't uh, have good internet at my mom's house, which is where he was going to be. My mother is 76 years old. She's not aware enough to help him log on and get on. And I know I could teach him to log on, but with his autism and all, if he gets confused or overwhelmed, I was just like, this is this, this online stuff is going to be a disaster. So also, I told you guys that his resource teachers weren't going to be available online. I may have told you that. he has He's in regular classes, but if he struggles with math or reading, they bring in resource teachers for 45 minutes a day, and they help him out with that. Those teachers were not going to be available online. So I was like, online is not an option for anybody with a special needs child in our district. So I had decided against my heart of hearts to send him to in-person learning and I was really really stressed out about that I'd had quite a few anxiety attacks driving which is so dangerous about that and um but that was the only choice I had then a couple of days after I'd made that choice we get an email saying that the first four weeks in our district are going to be virtual so oh my gosh here we go again no laptop no reliable internet no resource teachers 76 year old mother who's not going to be able to help him navigate if he can't navigate on his own he's not going to be able to get online and it's going to be a disaster it's just going to be horrible so i had to deal with that but there's no other option this is what we're doing because of the situation so this is what i've been dealing with i'm like okay fine i went online to register him for a laptop and a hotspot Come to find out they registered him under the last wrong last name. They registered him under my last name, not his dad's last name. He's been in six, school for six years and he's always been his dad's last name. I don't know what happened. And that took a week to straighten out. Supposedly it's straightened out. I don't know if it is. So that was stress of that. My job. There's the built up stress of everything. Um, Was bringing on heart palpitations, bringing on anxiety attacks, bringing on panic attacks while I'm driving. I'm just bringing on migraines. I'm just a mess. I was a mess. I've had a good few days, but the last two, three weeks have been just a roller coaster of BS, a roller coaster of just B friggin' S. So I've had migraines before. I've had migraines that last up to four days. 
but I hadn't had a four-day migraine in years. In particular, affected my hearing and my eyesight. My eyesight in my left eye and my hearing in my right ear. Weird. This eye, honestly, to tell you guys the truth, has never, has not gotten to 100%. I still have to rub it a lot. There's a little blurriness to it. My hearing got fine, but that migraine was so painful. My eyes shut. The nausea was ridiculous. I couldn't keep anything down. I couldn't walk. Everything friggin' hurt. Um, this eye stayed shut for about almost the whole two days. This ear, I thought I had had a stroke, honestly. And one of the doctors that I work with actually wants me to be checked out. I don't know if the technical term is hysterical blindness, but it's affected by stress, which brings on a migraine, which affects your ocular vision and you have occlusions and all kind of crap with the eyeballs. Uh, it happened to me about a year ago. But anywho, um, so I'm missing work for that. I'm missing work for my mom not being well. Uh, a little dude had a gusher of a nosebleed not too long before. So there's been consistent days, at least one day a week for like a month where I've not been to work two days with the migraine because I could not function. I could not drive. No way I'm getting behind the wheel of a car. I can't even freaking see. Um, and my boss, who has a love-hate relationship with me, the manager of our clinic, some days when I go into work after I've missed is just a big jerk, a big friggin' jerk. She's rude. She's petty. She'll look at me and roll her eyes. She, she's older than I am. And she's just so stinking petty at times. So that puts stress on me as well. Uh, I ended up having an anxiety attack at work. Thankfully, one of the doctors that I work with talked me down, talked me down from it. It was just too much. And that's what I've been dealing with on a daily. It's always something. It's always something. Then the pipe with the toilet. And and it's affecting, you know, my memory and everything. I forgot to pay my phone bill. Forgot to pay my phone bill. And and it's automatic. But you have to, it sends you a little alert. Boing, pay. And I have to push pay. I forgot to push pay. I was trying to upload the cooking video and it wouldn't go through. And I'm like, what the heck is going on here? Oh, duh. So I pushed pay and now here we are. I'll be able to upload this one. But it's just, it's not a bunch of bad stuff. Nothing bad is happening. Thankfully, every time my mom falls, she gets up. Nobody's sick. My big dude is learning to transition from military to civilian life and he's struggling a little bit. He's 23 years old and he's learning to juggle his money and learning to be on his own and uh, transitioning into civilian life. And I help him as much as I can with advice. If he needed money, I would send it to him. That's not an issue. I am very proud of him. But as a mother, I'm like, oh, will my baby have rent? Oh, will my baby be able to do this? Of course he can. Of course, I know he can. But even worrying about him, he's still a joy. He is still a joy to me because he's out there doing his thing. And as a 20-something year old, like all of us, in those early years or a lot of us in those early years you know you're, you're it's it's growing pains and i'm more worried than he is he has everything under control but i'm a mommy and it's my mommy heart but um so he is the least of my worries but i still worry about him as a mother but i'm just trying to take care of my kid and deal with school and deal with everything the only and you know what i'm not even gonna say it i was gonna say the only thing i'm not worried about is cha-ching but I better not say anything because you never know. With the Perez look, you never know. But it's just little things. It's just little bitty things. And I think that's why I've been shopping so much, honestly, because I get in these moods where nothing is going right. Nothing is in good flow. Everything is just in my life. But shopping, you go in and it's smooth sailing. Like I said, I'm not struggling financially. So five dollars here ten dollars there ain't gonna hurt nothing but uh i need to curb that because i've been watching hoarders a whole lot and most of these hoarder people ended up hoarders because of depression and anxiety you guys i ain't trying to go there but uh now as i speak it all out now that some time has passed between each headache it doesn't seem as dire. It doesn't seem like the sky is falling down on me. But y'all know, if anybody struggles with anxiety, y'all know when it's happening, oh my gosh, it's like the world is ending. But that's just everything. Uh, I'm hoping that I can continue to get along with, with uh, 
ex's wife with little dude's official stepmom. I'm hoping we can continue to get along. I'm hoping and praying for strength and, and just better for my mom. I'm still praying about the school situation that I can put something in place that's going to work because I work all day. I can't be there to help him maneuver through the interweb without falling apart. But I'm just... I'm going to be worried until I don't have to be worried anymore. Okay, so that's just where I stand right now. But right now, I've had an awesome meal. I'm about to go maybe open a bottle of wine. Maybe. I know I already said that. I think I already said that. Memory. There we go. I might open a bottle of wine. I'm not sure. Um, but I'm going to go watch Cobra Kai. And thank you guys for listening. If y'all sat through the whole thing. So we're okay. We're going to be okay. I know we're going to be okay because I just didn't take the time to breathe. I would forget to pray. And I wasn't talking about it. I wasn't telling anybody anything. So it just built up. But here I am letting go. And thank you guys for listening. So until my next go around, which is another haul. Yes, I know. Um, I love y'all bunches and stay safe and have a great weekend.